Hey guys, it's LP from Techno Buffalo, and today we'll be taking a tour of Windows 7. We'll be looking at the new features and basically looking at how they work. This is the release candidate version of the beta build 7100, and I'm running this overview on a mid range setup. I have an Intel quad clocked at 3.4 GHz and 4 GB of semi fast RAM. I'm running Windows 7 off a of RAID 0, so it may run a bit faster than off a single hard drive. And as you can see, even though I'm running the two Caviar Black hard drives in RAID, the Windows 7 performance testing gave me only a 5.9. Anything above 5.9 is apparently reserved for solid state drives. Okay, let's get started. An important factor in operating system, in my opinion, is how it looks. It's essentially the piece of software that you're going to be looking at most of the time while sitting at your computer. So it's definitely something you don't mind to be pleasing to the eye. Windows 7 comes with extensive customization features. The wallpapers on themes can now be set as basically slideshows. The pre-installed themes I think are quite nifty. Microsoft has really found some nice looking high-res wallpapers. There are a bunch of pictures spanning from gorgeous landscape shots to some pretty freaky looking character drawings as well. Apparently Mr. Gates has some time to doodle now that he's retired. And he's definitely been getting some stylistic influences from Salvador Dali. The architecture theme has some stunning shots of very interesting looking buildings. In the past I've usually just used my own custom wallpapers, but these pre-installed wallpapers on Windows 7 are actually looking quite appealing. Just like on Windows Vista, you can tweak the color settings of the taskbar on Windows to suit your liking. I think a bright pink might go pretty well with this blue color. Or maybe not. When you get tired of pre-installed themes, you can make your own slideshow based theme. Just bring in your own set of pictures and set the time interval and you're pretty much good to go. And you can shuffle up the pictures if you will. Anyone recognize what this wallpaper is from? Now this is going to be a good movie. I must go see it. Whoops, how'd that get in there? Now this is nice. This wallpaper is from the upcoming Tron Legacy movie. The desktop itself hasn't changed too much. The sidebar from Vista is now gone, but you can still have your average widgets, or gadgets as they're now called, that you can lay out on your desktop. Double clicking on the gadgets lays them out on the right edge of the screen. You can also drag the gadgets to any place of the screen that suits your liking. Out of the way is usually a good idea. A transparent grid automatically aligns the gadgets and icons and keeps the desktop looking clean. I'm not going to be needing these, but I will leave the CPU and RAM meter on so you can keep tabs of how much power the Windows 7 is taking up. Just for clarification, some of the RAM and processor usage is been taken up by the recording software, which is recording this in high definition. If you're interested in the software, Google Camtasia 6.0. Okay, let's take a look at the more interesting changes to Windows 7. One of which is the new taskbar, or the super bar as they now call it. Interesting prefix. I would have called it the mega bar. Moving aside from the obvious aesthetic improvements, there have been a couple of new features added to the taskbar. When you run your cursor over the tab, you get a preview of the program's open windows. In this case, we're looking at the open tabs in Internet Explorer. And when you run your mouse over the small preview windows, you can quickly preview the entire page without actually accessing it. You can, for example, quickly check out what tabs you have left open on your Internet Explorer. I'm done looking at these sites so I can actually close the tabs from here without going into the program itself to close them. I think it's very cool that you can run your mouse over any open program icon and it will give you a small preview window. Also a cool new added feature is that when you right click on an icon, you get some very convenient options. When you for example right click on the Internet Explorer icon, you see your favorite or pinned websites on the top and here you can see your most frequently visited pages, which you can launch directly with good haste. You can also pin some of your frequently visited pages to your pin section, if you like. Okay, also a very nifty new feature is that when you download any file on Internet Explorer, you get a pretty cool progress bar on the taskbar tab itself. 
So when you are, for example, downloading big files, you can easily keep tabs on your progression by simply looking at the taskbar tab itself. The right-clicking features work on any program as well. Here you can see some recent folders I've accessed, and while we're here, you probably noticed the Windows 7 has some new sounds. Accessing folders gives out a kind of jazzy bass string chime. Which always brings, at least to my mind, the Frasier theme. Hey baby, I hear the blues are calling, tossed salads and scrambled eggs. Quite stylish. It could be just me though. Anyways, as I mentioned, the preview view works on any program. Right-clicking on the Microsoft Word brings out an option to launch recent Word documents, and it's an option that I very frequently use. Windows 7 also has some mouse-free commands for operating the taskbar. You can just hit the Windows button and press the number that coincides with a program running from left to right on the taskbar. For example, I want to launch the Google Chrome program, which is second from the left. So I hit Windows 2. The VLC player is fifth from the left, so I hit Windows 5. This is also a feature I've grown accustomed to, and I use quite often. I mean, come on, moving your mouse is so 2007. Okay, let's actually bring the VLC player back up, and I'll show you a cool new feature. In Windows 7, you can grab almost any program and run it against the edges of your desktop. It will stick to the edge and scale the window on the side of the screen. So if you, for example, run it over here on the right and release, it will scale the application to the right side of the screen. Or if left is your preference, you can easily place it on the left. If you drag the program to the upper edge, it will maximize the window. The new feature saves time in scaling windows to appropriate size, for example in multitasking situations. And I actually use this feature quite a lot while writing my thesis. During the couple of months of writing, I actually watched four seasons of Battlestar Galactica on split screen. You know, needed some inspiration for the writing. Multitasking at its best. Excellent show by the way. I just ordered the whole series on Blu-ray to replace my DVDs. Another feature coming up is called Arrow Shake. For this we need to create a bit of a mess, so let's open all these programs on top of the VLC player. Ever so often you might find yourself in a situation where you have a lot of windows and junk open on the desktop, and you just need to get rid of all windows except one. Arrow Shake is a solution for this. Just grab a program from the top and shake it violently. As you can see, all other windows are minimized. Shake it again and it's a mess all over again and shake. Not a bad feature, but sometimes you just want to clear the entire desktop. And a button for this is found way down here on the right. Clicking it will clear the desktop. I know where it is, and I'm gonna take this there. It's great to see that this time around Microsoft have really listened to the core users. They've kept all the features that worked and fixed or improved on some of the features and issues that didn't work on Windows Vista. One of the reasons why I skipped on Windows Vista was the gaming on the operating system was worse than on Windows XP. As you may have guessed, I play a lot of games. Here are some of the games I've played recently, but let's take a look at how Windows 7 can handle one of my favorites. Okay, video settings are at max, and let's play some Fallout 3 with Windows 7. Welcome to on Vista, I would be getting some lower frame rates and some stability issues as well. Even though Vista had DirectX 10 support, which the XP lacked, not many games supported DirectX 10 at the time, so I had no reason to stick with Vista. But Windows 7 brings a change to this. It's equally as fast as XP in gaming, and it brings DirectX 10 support. And support for the upcoming DirectX 11 as well. In my heart I have but one... Hello kind sirs, would you like to have eight mini nukes? Have some. And that one is... Ow. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. This is the first of many Windows 7 videos to come. 
Next month, I'll be comparing Windows 7 against the Mac OS X 10 Snow Leopard, which launches in September. So stay tuned, LP signing out. And it's your admission that you feel.